What if we spliced animal DNA with humans? The different powers we would could gain. Have you ever wondered about having amazing speed like the cheetah? With the cheetah's speed, you could navigate wide distances within a short time. We see this in the movie Spliced, which involves creating genetically engineered creatures. The urge to be stronger, faster, and more sensitive has led to this phenomenon which has gained massive research and investment. So, could we become like hawks? Or the web-drifting Spider-Man, saving the day and making the world a better day? Well, let's find out. Understanding DNA In elementary science, cells are termed as the basic unit of life in every living thing. These cell structures and functions are determined by our DNA. DNA influences the overall appearance, health, and actions of the entire organism. DNA is a biological molecule that houses all the instructions every organism needs to function daily and reproduce. The DNA contains four bases named adenine A, guanine G, thymine T, and cytosine C. These bases are common in every organism, however their arrangement is different. Furthermore, there are over 2 billion DNA in the human body. These are packed within the nucleus of each cell. Each length of DNA that codes for a specific protein is called genes. There are over 30,000 genes in humans. The DNA composition in individuals is about 99.9% .9 identical. Therefore, no two human beings have the same DNA. DNA can only be transmitted at birth through the fusion of the sperm and egg of both parents to form an entirely different DNA structure. However, certain characteristics are transmitted and also some inheritance can be passed on. Other than that, no two human beings have the same DNA structure. Superhumans. Is it possible? Most scientists agree that it is possible, but for now, no breeding program could create one. Even if the genes were otherwise matched, it wouldn't work. However, it might not cause complications in the human body. So far, there has been an experiment where mice are created to have brains that are part human. The general goal of these experiments is to aid in human medical science. To explain, giving mice human brains can help in better understanding of the human brains and more crucial in testing drugs that could not ethically be tested on humans. Theoretically speaking, it's completely possible because DNA is just DNA. It doesn't matter where it comes from, whether human to animal, animal to animal. The donor genes will be active and make a protein because that's what genes do. These donor genes make little recipes that cells use to make different proteins. In short, the DNA can stay in humans, but no impact or any effect will be made. What's impossible for now comes when you say, if you put certain genes into different individuals, would it give that individual some new power? For example, if you put an olfactory receptor found in dogs into a human, would a human be enhanced to have a sharp smell? The answer is no, because one gene doesn't give a big characteristic like that. One gene is not responsible for the super-accurate sight of eagles, the sensitive smelling ability of dogs, or the long-range hearing ability of foxes, or something like that. Research approved in Japan shows that splicing human DNA with animal DNA, such as in pigs, produces human-like organs. These could be used for future transplants without the risk of rejection or the need for anti-rejection drugs. This will minimize dependence on human donors for transplants. Furthermore, to go full-on mad scientist, there could be a merging of two complete embryos. By all indications, to merge a human embryo with a wolf embryo. Could it be a success? For now, it is unrealistic. Looking ahead, the success of creating a half-human, half-wolf hybrid could depend on various factors. It might emerge as a blended entity, with efforts underway to control the distribution of specific traits, like the desirable characteristics of wolves. Back to date, human stem cells are used for such experiments, in contrast with human embryos. There is a reason why all the human studies cited so far used human stem cells rather than human embryos, due to ethics and legality. Then again, humans have tried creating human-animal hybrids before, such as in the case of the human Z. It failed because it was approached using sexual reproduction rather than a chimera. So let's assume, on the basis of argument, that someone actually decided to do this with wolves. What then? 
it would be dangerous as the new organism may exhibit wild wolf traits. Also, there would be no real commercial value outside of maybe some kind of hard workforce. In addition, since the genetic information is not blended, it would be incapable of natural reproduction of its kind. To successfully do this, you would want to create a chimera. So what's chimera? Chimera. In humans, a chimera is a person who has cells from two different sources. Since those cells are from different organisms, it results in two sets of DNA. But how could this possibly happen in humans? Many people's bodies contain at least a few living cells from another person. Naturally, it can occur when a mom is pregnant with twins, and if one embryo dies, the other one could possibly absorb its deceased twins' cells. Other times, chimerism can occur after an organ transplant. For example, the organ from the healthy donor replaces the damaged or diseased tissue in someone who is the recipient. When placed into the recipient, the transplanted organ does not change but retains the donor's cells and their DNA. As a result, the recipient will have two different types of cells. Most of the body will retain its original set of cells with its original DNA, but the new organ will have the donor cells and DNA. Lastly, baby's cells don't die out in the mother's, they remain in her till she dies. Aside from this, more rarely, a single person can be a mix of cells that appear to derive from two different individuals naturally. To answer the question of whether we can splice animal DNA with human DNA, such a medical procedure is referred to as chimerism. Advanced medicines and surgeries have been conducted that entail using pig valves to replace damaged human valves. Such organs from pigs will retain their cells and DNA within the individuals. Cheetah Powers Unlocked While it is theoretically possible to edit human genes to incorporate traits like the speed of a cheetah, it is important to consider the complex biological adaptations that contribute to the animal's running ability. According to the evolution theory, cheetahs have evolved for millions of years to develop their unique running capabilities and also their skeletal structure, muscle composition, and cardiovascular system. Adding a single gene from a cheetah to a human would not automatically grant the human the ability to run like a cheetah in like manner develop in the cheetah a brain like a human. But what makes the cheetah run? For this function, natural selection was on the animal's side. Eleven different genes revealed mutations occurring over generations that boosted the animal's muscle contraction, stress response, and regulation of energy-releasing processes, all of which boost the big cat's running prowess. Can you see that? The cheetah had to wait millions of years to download its running capabilities into its DNA? This case study is abstract and employed just for the sake of argument. But we hope we attained some clarity. Glowfish Powers Unlocked The technology used for creating the glowfish is recombinant DNA technology. It is an artificial DNA through the combination of different genetic materials from different sources. Recombinant DNA technology is popularly known as genetic engineering. The recombinant DNA technology discovered the use of restriction enzymes in the year 1968 by Swiss microbiologist Werner Arber. Presently, glowfish is the only recombinant DNA animal that has been approved for human consumption by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The aftermath of the approval has raised important questions about whether and to what extent genetically modified animals are safe for consumers. But one thing is certain, the FDA conducts extensive research before approval is given for a product. In a nutshell, for now, forget the Spider-Man wall-climbing stuff coming to reality. Think about it this way. Even if the DNA matches, for instance, from dog DNA, what would be the point? You wouldn't be able to use them, not without a way to manipulate the biological features of your bones and body. When you think of having superhuman strength, like lifting a car similar to Superman, it's cool to imagine. But consider, would your back be able to withstand the strain? And how much energy would such a feat require? There would be real-life consequences. No such power would make our lives better. My guess is once you had it, it would feel like a curse because it wouldn't give you what you wanted. Regardless, it's all very complex procedure because we're tinkering with the building blocks of life but that doesn't mean we can't discover more and unlock the mysteries of our genes and those of our animal brethren. So long as it's done cautiously and responsibly, 
We'll be here to welcome the future of DNA splicing with a big old bear hug. And should it all work out, hopefully we'll have literal fuzzy bear arms to carry out the loving embrace. That's it for now. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted. Till next time, stay safe.